Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog and the Reptarium's first virtual reality tour. Now, the deal is, is you can watch it just like normal on YouTube. If you take your cursor, you can actually move around and see what's going on in the screen, or you can use Google Glass or a VR set, or even if you take your phone, you can actually move it like this and you can see around. So we're going to do a virtual tour today at the Reptarium. I'm just waiting for my guy to get here. We're going to walk around, show him around, and you're going to be part of the tour. Hey, welcome to the Reptarium. How are you? It's so great that you uh, kind of came out and hung out with us. I'm going to kind of give you a look around, see all the animals. We're going to have an absolutely great time. Behind me, of course, is Bowser here. He's a 100-pound snapping turtle, an alligator snapper. We got guacamole over here. Of course, my girl Lucy. Uh, she's always a star of the show over there for sure. But I think I'm going to go ahead and get started over here. So go ahead, follow me, and I think you'll have a good time. Let's see. We're going to go ahead and grab Nova down first. And uh, he's up here. Look at how gorgeous he looks right there. I mean, what an amazing animal. I'm just going to get a rock so I can get him. Just pull these rocks over. And, of course, you can stand on things here at the Reptarium. Come on, Nova. Come on, buddy. Come on, bud. Come on, little buddy. There you go. Look at this guy. Of course, this is a beautiful frill dragon from New Guinea. And of course, these are like the Dilophosaurus when it comes to the Jurassic Park, that little dinosaur that frills up. But Nova is such a friendly animal. He really never flares his neck up. And he was recently a daddy, actually. We got some eggs from his mama, so uh, we're pretty excited about that. So he is super cool and uh, absolutely an amazing animal. I tell you, there's so many amazing animals I can't wait to show you guys around. As a matter of fact, speaking of something that blows people's minds, definitely something you're not going to see pretty much almost anywhere else because there's only a handful of these in the entire world and of course that is Ben and Jerry just take a look at Ben and Jerry that's right the two-headed snake that's right Ben is on the left and Jerry is on the right. And up until recently, Ben was doing almost all the eating, but now Ben and Jerry both eat, which is just really crazy. But you know, they're two separate snakes that have one body. Uh, so they sometimes fight about which way to go. Sometimes if there's something in the middle of their head like this, they'll like fight to try to get by. Just really a goofy animal. And we're so happy that we're able to show people this amazing animal here at the Reptarium. But again, so much cool stuff to show you. I can't even think where to start. Oh my God, just every cage you see has something uh, amazing, at least amazing to me, and I hope that you'll feel the same way. I'm gonna pull this guy out right now. This, of course, is an amazing reticulated python named Night Fury. Oh my gosh. And I always say that he's kind of like a living oil switch. Go ahead and touch. You can touch him. He's super tame. That's the thing about the Reptarium is that we won't ever pull anything out that isn't going to be 100% docile. So you have no real chance of getting bitten or hurt in any way. But he's kind of like a living oil slick, right? He's just jet black, but that iridescence make all those amazing rainbows look to him. And, uh, and again, this is the longest species of snake on the planet, reticulated pythons, can literally sometimes get up to 25 foot. So uh, certainly he's just a little guy at being like six, seven months old. So he's got a long way to go. Let's show you this guy here. He's about two years old. He's actually an Argentine blue tegu lizard. And he is absolutely amazing. He's always hiding under this rock right here, which is his water bowl. And here he is. His name is Tazzy. Look at Tazzy, isn't he amazing? And you gotta feel the beating on him right there. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. I mean, it literally is this kind of smooth beads that are really cool. You can see these really, you know, real strong paws right here that are great for climbing. Although these guys will stay on the ground most of the time, certainly can climb and grip really well. So that's why we keep him on the ground a lot. But look at that beautiful tongue right there. Wow. He's cool. And again, he'll eat, you know, mainly like meats, right? He'll eat, uh, you know, anything from turkey to beef to fish to chicken. But uh, he does like his occasional banana. And oftentimes we'll just let him go in back home himself. Go ahead, Tazzy. Go home, buddy. There he goes. <laughs> I bet you don't see too many lizards that are trained to go home on their own. So Taz is a pretty special animal and we absolutely love him to death here for sure. And so do so many people that come. So I hope that you're enjoying yourself so far, but we have a lot more animals to see for sure. Uh, again, we have all kinds of different things. We have emerald tree boas up here and uh, there's blood pythons and 
The thing that I love about the Reptarium is that it is kind of like an exhibit itself. You walk underneath a banyan tree, you know, something like that. So uh, it's kind of like we wanted to bring the exhibit, just kind of wrap it around you, if you know what I mean. You know, a snake that is probably one of the most sought after snakes here when people come. Everyone always wants to play with my girl Perdita because she is so special. Look at that animal right there. Hoo hoo doggy. That thing is gorgeous. And again, just like Night Fury, she's a reticulated python, but isn't she incredible? And again, her name is Perdita after the 101 Dalmatians because she was born pure white and developed all of that color and patterning as she's got older, just like a Dalmatian dog. But she's coming up on two years old this summer, so she's, uh, she's got a long way to go, but she's growing really good. And again, one of the animals that when people come here and are kind of a little afraid of holding animals, they often hold Perdita just because she's amazing. You know, I mean, people think, oh my gosh, but there's, uh, there's this one here that I can show you. That's another one that's gonna eventually be one of my biggest snakes maybe down the road but they grow relatively slow and of course that's the anaconda let's see if i can find her in here somewhere she's in here somewhere where are you at girl where are you at where are you here you are i can feel you there she is oh she's hiding underneath her water dish right now that's what's going on so this of course is a green anaconda and feel how different she feels compared to so many snakes. It's because they have really tiny scales and they're very tight because these guys will spend a lot of their time in the water so they can't have a lot of bacteria that gets underneath their scales, right? Because they could get, you know, bacterial infections. So anaconda, again, eventually gonna get this big around, just an absolutely amazing animal. But Verde is super docile, a great snake, and you never have to worry about her biting. And that's what I love about her. And I love that about almost all the snakes that we have here is that they're just so docile and habituated to being handled all the time, you know? And speaking of a really bizarre snake, you gotta see this one. This one is crazy. Of course, this is Joker. And Joker, you gotta feel this one. This one is crazy. Joker is a scaleless Texas rat snake. So it is a scaleless snake. It's lacking keratin. So much like a hairless cat, right? You know, you know the hairless cat is lacking keratin, which is making up hair. This is lacking keratin that makes up the scale. So Joker is just really cool. And it's one of those animals that when people see and feel it, they're just like, it's so bizarre. I've never felt anything like it. And that's one of the things we love here at the Reptarium is to show you guys things that maybe you aren't get a chance to see anywhere else. Oh, speaking of a really cool animal that is coming out to say hi to us right now, Take a look at this guy right up here. This is actually Toothless, the black dragon. Come on, Toothless, just come out, buddy. <laughs> Isn't he? Whoa, he, he tried to jump on me there. He's absolutely incredible. You can go ahead and pet him. Now he's only about six months old. He's a black dragon, which is an Asian water monitor, but a melanistic version. And he's gonna eventually get like six or seven foot long. But you can see how absolutely docile he is and tame. And of course we wanna keep him and all the animals really habituated, not only to handling, but just to be really great animals. And the biggest thing is, is to try not to get them to fear anything, right? As long as they're not fearing humans, they act amazing and are really incredible. Uh, you know what's really cool? I gotta show you guys this. this is is actually some American alligators and in particular we have six of them in here but this little girl here is one of my favorites her name is Tildy and Tildy is about four and a half or five months old you can feel the very back right there see isn't she something now she's gonna eventually get eight to ten foot long but we have a deal with Gatorland and these guys are so cheeky we have a deal with Gatorland where we actually have these babies for X amount of time and then we send them back oh get back in there cheeky monkey you cheeky little dude what are you doing get back in there oh my god they are so amazing I love American alligators for sure and speaking of American alligators I have a pretty special one I want to show you hey Noah can you do me a favor and bring salt the albino alligator over yes, of course. awesome all right cool oh my gosh take a look at her isn't she absolutely amazing oh look at that little girl of course she's an albino alligator and she's chirping right now a little salty now she's going to eventually get eight to ten foot as well but we're actually going to keep her her whole life and she said you hear that 
Isn't that the cutest thing in the world? What an amazing animal, huh? But she is super cool. Again, we'll keep her, we'll keep on building bigger and bigger exhibits for her as she gets bigger. But uh, we also have a melanistic alligator named Pepper. So we have salt and pepper. Noah, thank you so much, all right? You can go ahead and put her back. Thank you so much. So she's pretty amazing, right? So again, lots of different things all over the place here. We've got geckos and we've got, you know, different types of snakes and, and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want to show you this really quick. You got to see her. She's actually a rhino iguana. And Noah, can you see if we have some superworms in back really quick? I'm gonna grab a, a, a little tong here for us, and we're gonna see if we can get Bella to come down so you can pet her, okay? But you can take a look at her as I grab my stuff, all right? I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back with my superworm here, and let's see if we can get Bella down. Bella, do you want a superworm, girl? Come on, girl, come on down. There you go, girl. There you go, sweetheart. Do you want, want one? Do you want one, baby? Oh, she's being a little bit picky today. I don't know what her deal is, but you can just pet her. She loves pets. So go up here. Yep, go ahead. Right up here and pet her. She loves it. The more you pet her, the more she'll love you. <laughs> she's something. I tell you what, I love that animal. That is definitely an animal that is uh, one of the most crazy animals here at the Reptarium. Just uh, people come and can't believe it. She's more like a cat than she is a reptile, to be honest, because she loves to be petted and stuff like that. But uh, I'm going to show you Potato here. It's a really cool lizard from Australia. This is actually what they would call a central blue tongue skink. So here you go. Take a pet of that one really quick. Isn't that something? And of course they have that blue tongue and that blue tongue is basically there to kind of ward off predators, right? Because in the wild, things like blues and reds and bright colors are oftentimes poisonous. So this kind of mocks poison, right? So that tongue comes out big and wide and says, I'm a blue tongue, don't eat me because I'm poisonous. Again, it's not poisonous, but we name him Potato because uh, we think he looks like a potato and he kind of acts like a potato. But nevertheless, he is a super good animal and we love him to death. And uh, he's just kind of great with the kids too because he just kind of sits there and doesn't do a whole lot, which is really good for someone that's maybe not as adept at handling snakes, right? Or lizards or whatever the case is. We have this animal here that's just a stunner. She's a beauty. Her name is Honey, and she's a piebald ball python. Whoo, look at that girl right there. I mean, unbelievable. She is just gorgeous. And of course, that piebald is a recessive mutation that causes those big white blotching. And it can be very random when you produce them. You can have one that has, you know, 5% white. You can have ones that have almost 90% white. Honey is about perfect at about 40 or 50%. And she is a stunner and also unbelievably beautiful. And again, you know, for someone that's maybe not as is comfortable with handling snakes, you know, honey's a great opportunity, right? Because she's not that big and she's so docile and kind of slow moving too. So she kind of is a good animal, if you know what I mean. But uh, we do have a couple animals that aren't as nice, like tree boas and stuff like that, that look beautiful, but uh, they aren't exactly uh, the best handling snake. If you were to handle them, you'd probably get bit. But, uh, and then of course we have big snakes, like my girl Daisy here, who is looking absolutely gorgeous right now. I think she wants to come out and say hi to you. She's really good. Uh, we got butterscotch up top. We got Mata Mata turtles over here. Uh, oh, let me show you this bearded dragon. This is actually, my guy Fatty Wop. Let's see what we got here with Fatty here. All right, and he is a bearded dragon from Australia. And he's one of the older lizards that I have here. He's been around for about eight years. Yep, you can feel and those spikes are his defense mechanism, but when you feel them, they don't really feel very spiky. So they're just kind of there for looks, to be honest with you. But Fetty is an omnivore, meaning that he'll eat vegetables. He'll also eat crickets and roaches and superworms and stuff like that. But again, he's a uh, unbelievably habituated to handling and an absolutely wonderful, wonderful ambassador here at the Reptarium for sure. Go ahead, shut him up real quick and then I'll show you the next thing. I've got a really good lizard that I wanna show you here in a second that I think you're gonna really like. It's one of the kind of freakier lizards in my opinion because they're so unique. And that of course is a chameleon. But this particular one is a panther chameleon, a nosy bee panther chameleon, and this guy's name 
is karma. You want to put your hand out? Now put it right on your hand right here. There you go. That, of course, is Karma the Chameleon. I mean, isn't it cool? Of course, it has those independent eyes, has a prehensile tail that can hang on. It almost acts like a fifth leg. And then, of course, it has that unbelievably long tongue. It could literally shoot its tongue out this far and catch a roach or a superworm or a hornworm or a cricket or whatever the case that it's hunting that particular day. So uh, he's absolutely not only uh, a great animal but unbelievably beautiful and uh, something that I know everyone comes in and is always like shocked at like oh my god it is so absolutely beautiful. But uh, speaking of beautiful I tell you what I'm going to probably end the tour on this one right here guys if you don't mind and again we didn't get around and see everything but we saw enough stuff that was kind of interesting and we just have to make sure that this guy knows he's not getting fed because we don't want to have him come out and, and get us like we're food right let me go ahead and get Noah can you do me a favor can you grab a hook for me please you know the thing is is that reticulated pythons in particular and a lot of snakes are very docile but when they think they might be getting fed they sometimes have a food response he has a pretty heavy food response but once he he actually calms down and realizes he's not getting fed. He is a puppy dog. So, all right, thank you so much. You know, I appreciate it. And all I do is I take a snake hook and I just slowly pat him to where he knows he's not getting fed. And then I can go ahead and pull him out like nothing. You know, see, he's just a puppy dog. And of course, this guy is named Casper. Casper ugh, is a pretty big reticulated python. He's a male, he's about nine foot long, and he's a handful. I could tell you what, go ahead and pet him. Whew. That's okay, you don't have to worry. He's gonna be fine. He's a tame dude. Isn't he beautiful? Again, this is a black-eyed leucistic reticulated python. I tell you what, that is one gorgeous snake. And he's a mover. He loves to move, he loves to cruise around, and he is just a wonderful snake. So I'll go ahead and get him back in his cage. Again, absolutely beautiful, but definitely likes to eat. So gotta always keep that snake hook around just in case. And uh, that's something that we always do when we're working with bigger snakes anyways. It's just as a precaution because, you know, they're they're very docile, but they're very food uh, kind of motivated, if you know what I mean. So regardless, guys, that is a kind of a overview of the Reptarium, you know. We saw a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that we didn't get a chance to see. Maybe we'll do another tour with you guys later if you want. If you want to come back, it would be absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, I would love for to bring you into my world again. So I hope you enjoyed the tour. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, man. See you later.